Good afternoon, this is Robert Scribbler. I'm going to be talking a bit today about sea level rise. First, I'm going to explore some of the underlying causes of the present global sea level rise that we see today. So currently, the Earth system is about 1.1 degrees Celsius above 1880s averages. On a daily basis, we see global average temperatures that every day are above normal even when compared to the 1979 to 2000 baseline. Now, this global warming is a phenomenon that occurs across all climate zones, but particularly what we tend to see is that warming is more acute in the polar regions. Now, this polar warming is due to a process that is called polar amplification, in which increasing levels of greenhouse gases tend to cause the polar zones of the Earth to warm more rapidly relative to the lower latitude regions. Now, the primary cause of sea level rise is a warming climate. And at first, as the Earth began to warm, due to the massive dump of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that we saw during recent centuries due to fossil fuel burning, was that as the Earth warmed, the surface waters of the Earth and the whole ocean system also warmed. And this warming caused the oceans to thermally expand. Now, this thermal expansion of the world ocean system at first produced a relatively slow rate of sea level rise in the early 20th century of a rate of about six millimeters per year. But as global warming accelerated through the middle 20th century, the rate of sea level rise also accelerated as the oceans warmed up at a faster rate. Now, this thermal expansion also continued to build up through recent years, but also during this time, what we began to see was an increasing contribution uh, to sea level rise from melting glaciers. So as the oceans warmed, the basal regions of glaciers, the bases of glaciers began to melt. And this melting due to contact with the ocean in submerged ice fronts from ice sheets and ice shelves began to speed up the rate at which icebergs flowed from land glaciers and calved out into the ocean. This produced large volumes in the range of cubic kilometers, uh, multiple cubic kilometers per year, of ice coming off of land glaciers and being flushed out into the world ocean system. Now this process is, is a feedback related process. And so as the ocean continues to warm up, the melt tends to speed up. And as melt tends to speed up, the rate of calving icebergs speeds up and the fragility of the land ice sheets increases and the speed of the glacier meant toward the ocean also increases. And so what you can end up with is a potentially exponential rate of sea level rise increase. Now, presently at 1.1 degrees Celsius global warming, we are apparently just at the beginning of this process. But even now, what we are seeing is an accelerating rate of global sea level rise. So presently, if you look at the 1993 to 2018 timeframe, you'll note that global sea level rise is in the range of 3.3 millimeters per year. And that's av averaged over 1993 all the way to March of 2018. But those of you who are perceptive may have already noticed that the top end of this graph, the on the right-hand side, uh, shows a long-term accession or a, a deviance above the standard rate of melt for, I'm sorry, the rate of sea level rise for the past 
25 years. So this tool allows us to focus in on sea level rise post 2010, and we're gonna go ahead and do just that. We're going to look at the most recent eight year time frame. And what we see is that during the recent eight year time frame, sea level rise has accelerated to 4.6 millimeters per year. And this is primarily due to additional contributions from glaciers. During this century, there is a concern that this rate will continue to accelerate and it's likely to happen. There is much debate over how rapidly the acceleration will occur. But what we are likely to see is that over the next, over the coming decades, that annual rates of sea level rise will exceed one centimeter a year or, or potentially more. And that global sea levels will rise by between two and 10 feet or more this century. Now this places many coastal regions under threat. Presently, we are seeing increased impacts from storms and even simple high tide events for a growing number of locations around the world. Ocean, uh, ocean rise has forced island communities to begin to evacuate. And what we are also seeing is that coastal communities in various locations around the world are increasing, increasingly subject to inundation by flooding at times of high tide and during storms. Now, global sea level rise does not occur on a necessarily even basis. So what you tend to see is some, re some regions that experience more rapid sea level rise than others. And these regions are often located in areas near the eastern seaboard of the U.S., uh, throughout the, global, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, in the Pacific, in, near the Southeast Asian region, and surrounding Australia, and along the east coast of Africa. But as sea level rise accelerates, most regions of the world and coastal zones will continue to be impacted more and more. And this is a serious concern.